the learning of the panchadashi under the great master swami tapovanam gave swami chinmayananda an excellent foundation in the fundamentals of the essence of the scriptures and the sanskrit terms used in them this image of a cover it reveals what looks like a collection of the notes that he took over the two months of classes on this deep subject from june through august 1949 here is an example of notes that he took when a bengali brahmachari asked swami tapovanam swami it is said that there is no sadhana for moksha how is that swami tapovanam says you are ever a mukta free and that is the swarupa your true nature the reality in truth but avarna or the veiling is due to avidhya ignorance removal is the sadhana or becoming bliss is the true nature what is avidhya and maya this is the same the only difference is in quality the sattva guna pradhana or pure prominence is maya the malina guna pradhana or the impure prominence due to the mixture of tamas and rajas is avidya like rain water which is pure gets dirty by its mixing or coming into contact with earth and in just a few years to come we will find him writing about this process of creation in such detail he would also take the time to illustrate this process with one of his beautiful diagrams let us take a look at another snippet from his notes can a vedantin do loka seva must and can some remain in this bliss or samadhi and work in loka samgraha for the welfare of all all work is vikshepa janaka born out of disturbance and vikshepa this disturbance is the cause of ashanti the lack of peace in the early upanishads vedanta does not preclude the gnani working for loka samgraha only modern vedantins shankara sanctions it rather enjoins it perhaps the seeds of the mission were being planted in his mind by the divine hand early on many a times at the end of a class swami tapovanam would say what i have discussed with you is only the conditioned remove the conditioning and realize the self after contemplating these words for several days chinmaya felt compelled to ask the question during class swami ji Why not remove the conditioning and explain the pure brahman itself why do you say it is the eye of the eye without the eye conditioning the guru paused for a moment but then continued the class without responding a few minutes later he said chinmaya get me some water to drink the disciple was a bit surprised at the rare request nevertheless He quickly brought a kamandalu of fresh water and placed it in front of the guru. "What is this?" asked the guru with a slight pretense of anger in his tone. "Swami ji, this is the water you asked for," Chinmaya said nervously. "But did I ask for a kamandalu?" roared the master. "Or did I ask for water? Take the kamandalu away and bring me the same water." but swami ji uh, how can i carry water stammered the confounded chinmaya never mind said the master in a soft encouraging tone nobody can convey water without a vessel it is the same in conveying the knowledge of the truth the absolute cannot be explained in words and hence it is that the scriptures as well as the gurus explain only the conditioned truth instead of the absolute truth Swami Tapovan's predecessor Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa would also express a similar sentiment 
but in his own unmistakably simple way. What Brahman is cannot be described. Any attempt to do so would be defiled, like food that has been touched by the tongue. Only one thing has not been defiled this way, and that is Brahman. No one has ever been able to say what Brahman is. After the class, the students would take care of any necessary chores and prepare food. The only readily available food was dry roti. Luckily, Chinmaya did not have to go looking for flour nor the occasional vegetable since it was the responsibility of the Nepali Brahmachari. But it was Chinmaya's task to cook food for his guru. The idea was that since he was from the south, he might be better suited for such a task given that his guru was from the south as well. But not in this case. Chinmaya's expertise was in eating and enjoying the food, not making it. So, he was at a loss when it came to producing soft, round rotis. Sometimes, Swami Tapovanam would give a quizzical look at the questionable, deformed, thick and dry rotis that were brought to him by his student. But he never complained. He knew the intentions of the cook and ate them without comment. But only once he told a student, See, one never gets to give up tapas in these Himalayas, holding up in hand one of Chinmaya's rotis. And sometimes visitors would bring in a rare spicy sabji to go with the rotis. On such an occasion, Swami Tapovan would call out, Chinmaya, come! He would then give his student just one bite of the savory dish, just enough to whet his appetite. Perhaps he was testing to see if these occasional samplings of pleasure caused any disturbances in the mind of what was beginning to look like a promising student. In the evenings, as the sun began to set, the students would attempt to engage in discussions. But Swami Tapovanam did not approve of this. He would say, Talking is a waste of time. You go and do your own reflections. It is all in you. There was no electricity for reading either. Chinmaya would retire to his humble shelter, an old cow shed, and stooping all the way, to enter inside. He would spend long, cool nights contemplating the words of his guru and then meditating on the truth that they revealed. And thus the student passed his days delving deeper and deeper into the truth that lies hidden in oneself. <laughs>